Right, good afternoon everybody. Here we are and the topic today is love is to lay down your life for your friends. A very interesting statement. The infinite omnipresent Elohim of Israel, while remaining omnipresent, took upon the flesh of men and dwelt among us as Yeshua, Jesus, the unique human manifestation of Yahweh, Yahweh. So Yahweh himself, as we all know, is actually Yeshua or Jesus. So what great love he had that he himself didn't send someone else, he didn't make another man, but he himself, the creator of the world, came down onto this earth to die for us to be our salvation. Colossians 2.9 For in him dwells all the fullness of divinity bodily. He's talking here about Yeshua, Jesus, that he is the fullness of divinity bodily. yod Yahweh, Yahweh, by nature, is not flesh. He is not a servant, nor a man. yod Yahweh, had to take upon flesh to dwell amongst us. So he demonstrates, really, the greatest love of all. I often ask myself a question, you know, why did he do it? Well, the answer basically is simply is just love. He loved you and I so much that he had to die for us. Colossians 2, 8-9 Watch that there not be one misleading you through philosophy, empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the elements of the world, and not according to Messiah. For in him dwells all the fullness of divinity bodily. So again, scripture proves that it was Yahweh himself who became Jesus, Yeshua. One main reason for Yahweh becoming a man was to be our kinsman redeemer and die as a sacrifice on the stake or tree to set us free from the law of sin and death. In Romans 8, 2, For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Yeshua Messiah, set me free from the law of sin and death. So Yahweh himself, as some people call him God, he came personally down onto this earth and subjected himself to death, a horrible death, on a cross or a tree. Demonstrating to us that he... He himself had to die for you and me. Question come across my mind. Is there any other name God who has been declared as a loving saviour who has declared that he would give his life to save you and me? I can't think of one. Not even Allah. None. Can anyone here think of another God? With such love, not one. So why would you want to even believe in some other God? Acts 2.21 And it shall be that everyone who shall call on the name of Yahweh will be saved. And that's also in the Old Testament in Joel 2.28-32. It shall be that everyone who shall call on the name of Yahweh will be saved. Interesting. Very simple solution. If you just call on Yahweh's name, now that means you just don't sort of, it's like not a magical formula, but you have to really believe in him, accept him, accept what he says, accept his instructions. John 14, 21, 24. He that has my commandments and keeps them, notice there the keeps them, it is that one who loves me. And the one that loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and will reveal myself to him. Judah said to him, not the Iscariot, Master, what has happened that you are about to reveal yourself to us and not at all to the world? Yeshua answered and said to them, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father shall love him, and we will come to him and make a dwelling place with him. The one who does not love me does not keep my words, 
and the word which you hear is not mine, but of the Father who sent me. So naturally, no one's going to get into the, his kingdom that doesn't, who hates him, who doesn't love him. And here is the definition that we, if we love him, then we must keep his instructions, commandments, statutes, laws, etc. So if we're not keeping them, then it means we don't love him. He'll say, well, you didn't love me because you didn't follow my instructions, my commandments, and keep them. And so they're not going to make it, not going to get into his kingdom. And the word which you hear is not mine, but of the Father who sent me. What's the word? Basically the Torah. It's not so much just the New Testament. Yes, the New Testament refers basically all the time back to the Torah. So it's basically the Torah. We must follow, obey his Torah, his commandments, his instructions, his statutes, his laws, etc., 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. All scripture is written by inspiration of the Holy Spirit and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Righteousness means, definition of that word is following the Torah. So that the man of Yahweh may be perfected and complete for every good work. Again, what scripture is he talking about? He's talking about the written Torah, the Old Testament. The New Testament hadn't even been written at that stage. I like this little uh, picture. Biblical warning. Sugar-coated preaching is dangerous to your soul. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 4, 3 to 4, you're referring to. And there's a lot of sugar-coated preaching out there, as we all know. And we've got to be so careful that we're not deceived into this sugar-coated preaching where it basically says, you know, you're no longer under law. Yes, we are. We still must follow the law because it's the only proof that we can prove that we really love Yahweh and that gives us an, in, an entrance into his kingdom. Revelation 22.14 Blessed are the ones doing his commandments that their authority will be over the tree of life and that they may enter by the gates into the city. So again, blessed are the ones doing his commandments, his instructions, etc., his Torah. That their authority will be over the tree of life. So when we have authority over the tree of life, we can enter into his kingdom, into the city, through the gates. Revelation 22, 18 to 19. For I testify together with everyone, hearing the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, Yahweh will add upon him the plagues having been written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahweh will take away his part from the book of life and out of the holy city and of the things having been written in this book. So we can't add to and we can't take away. And unfortunately, this is what man has done. As we've started to discover, there's a lot of deception out there. And we're not to add to and we're not to take away. We're to follow exactly what's been written there. Matthew 15, 6-9. And in no way he honours his father or his mother, and you annul the commandment of Yahweh on account of your tradition. So here's Yeshua himself saying to the Pharisees that they made up their own traditions, their own laws, their own commandments. And he says, you annul the commandment of Yahweh on account of your tradition. Hypocrites. He's calling them hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy concerning you, saying, this people draws near to me with their mouth and with their lips honour me, but their heart holds far off from me. But in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So we're not to follow these commandments of men, these traditions of men. We're to follow Yahweh's Torah and that alone. And he refers, that, that's in the New Testament, Matthew, but it also refers to Isaiah 29.13 in the Old Testament. Oops. Mark 7 and 9, and he said to them, well do, well do you to set aside the commandment of Yahweh so that you may establish your own tradition. Things like Sunday, Christmas, Easter and a lot of other things. So if we're following these things, what, what are, what's happening? We're not following Yahweh's instructions, his commandments. And if we're doing that, 
We've added something to the Torah, added to his instructions, and so we will not enter into his kingdom. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't seem to realise that. And even ourselves sometimes. The truth, Matthew 5, 17 to 20. Do not think that I came to annul the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to annul but to fulfil. Truly I say to you, until the heavens and the earth pass away, in no way shall one yod or one stroke pass away from the Torah until all comes to pass. Therefore, whoever loosens one of these commandments the least and shall teach men so, he shall be called the worst in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, this one shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, if your righteousness shall not exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall not enter into the kingdom of Yahweh, never. Which commandments do we struggle with individually and eventually have to die to our own flesh, opinions and traditions? So basically what we're seeing here, what it, the revelation that came to me was, is to love, to love our neighbour, to love Yahweh himself. We have to die. Now that doesn't mean you, do, you, know, you leave this earth. We have to die to a lot of things in our lives. We have to delight, die to the things we have, ha, have a, how would you say, um, trouble in changing. A lot of people, one of the probably the biggest things we had to die to when we discovered uh, the deception that was there was probably observing the Sabbath. We had to des- die to that fleshly thing that, oh, we now have to, ha- on, a, on a Sabbath, no work, basically a day where we've got to rest for the whole Sabbath, we can't uh, buy, we can't sell, we can't go to the grocers and buy something. All of a sudden we realise we didn't d- buy the day before, we now have to buy, or oh, we're running out of petrol. And we come to this thing of, oh, should I go to the garage and buy petrol, or should I not? It's something we have to die to, and I think each one of us can come to a thing, what are you struggling with now? What is it that you have to die to to show your love to Yahweh that you are quite prepared to pre- obey completely everything he said? And we have to die. It, it's a death. So he's not talking about a death when you leave this earth and then you either go to heaven or hell. He's talking about now in your lifetime, right at this point in your life, what is it that you are not doing following his instructions, his commandments, his Torah, etc.? What other traditions are you following that have got to go by the wayside? What are the traditions that your mother or your father had that basically came into your life and you say, well, they always obeyed the Sunday, so therefore, I, yeah, I can still obey the Sunday and not obey the, the Sabbath. Why can't I go shopping on the Sabbath? Why can't I go now? I've got to go I've got to get some groceries. You know, and for some people, it, it's such a, a thing, say, like work. Some of you have have to, um, you know, you're, you're working on, you've been working on the uh, Sabbath like everybody else, and all of a sudden you learn about the Sabbath that you have to obey the Sabbath. And you think, well, what do I do? Well, do you love him? You have to die to that thing. It has to change. Numbers 15, 37, 41. And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, and you shall say to them that they shall make themselves fringes on the corner of their garments for their generations, and they shall put a thread of blue with a fringe of each corner. And it shall be to you for a fringe that you may look on it and remember all the commandments of Yahweh and do them. And that you do not go about after your own heart, your own eyes, after which you fornicate. That you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy to your Elohim. I am Yahweh your Elohim who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim. I am Yahweh your Elohim. Now it's interesting, this is a commandment and instruction of Yahweh. That we are to make ourselves fringes so that we remember his instructions. Now we all went through a stage, and maybe some of you are still going through that stage of, I have to wear a fringe? I have to make a thing that I have on my um, 
waste for my clothes. No one else has got them. But here Yahweh is saying, I've got to have them so that I can remember his commandments. How many of us struggled to make a decision to make fringes and even wear them around our waist? We had to die to ourselves. We had to die to the opinion of others when they look at us and maybe they're going to comment about it or they're going to think we're silly or whatever. And that is something really one of the major things most of us probably at one stage had to die to that we don't care what anybody else thinks. We don't care what Yahweh thinks. And it's a real struggle. It's a real decision. And this, I believe, is proving our love to Yahweh when we say, that's it. I'm not going to worry about what anybody else thinks. I'm not going to be, we're, worry about what anybody says. You know, for some of you, it is, it is really a thing to die for because you had to go to work amongst all your companions and people and all of a sudden you're wearing these, you think, you know, they're going to think silly looking fringes hanging on the side, you know, and they're going to think I'm a bit strange and I'm a bit silly. It is something you had to die to. And if you haven't died to it, you're going to have to die to it because you're going to have to prove your love, that you, you love Yahweh enough to do what he says to do. Not worrying about the opinions of other people around you, even at work, even to the point that you might lose your job over it. You know? So he's basically saying, love you have to die to someone. If, if, for Charmaine, if a big alligator came out of the, the, the ocean and started to attack her, I have to go and do my utmost to protect her to show you that I loved her. You know, there's been some YouTube stuff. There was actually an alligator. This woman, uh, she fell into the swimming pool and somehow in America there, there's alligators all over the place. And the alligator come out of the bushes and dived into the swimming pool after her. And what did her boyfriend do? He ran off. Mm. Now, did he love her? No. But there have been occasions where bears have come out of the wood and attacked the, the, the wife, and the husband has gone in and given his life for her life, proving that he really loved her. You know? Are we prepared even for one another? You know, we, we say, oh, yes, I love everybody. Well, let's see what happens. I was listening to, um, on YouTube, Trey Gowdy. He's the, one of the top Americans in the, whatever, the government thing. And he was talking. He's a Christian guy. And he was saying the one thing he always remembers was in America there was a plane crash. And the plane crashed into a bridge over a, a big lake, wherever it was, a river. They were all, it was freezing cold. The plane had crashed and all these people, they sort of, survived but they were in the water and it was freezing. A helicopter come over, let down a ladder and there was a guy there and he helped people onto that ladder. He didn't get on the ladder and up to the fourth person he got onto the ladder and they got saved and he drowned and he gave his life for those people. That shows his love for people. I think sometimes even during wartime those guys that have died through the war, they went to, for their children, their wives, their mothers, their fathers, and they gave their lives. It showed, to me, I really believe, it showed my, their love to those other people and also their love to God. So we've got to, you know, it's some of the things when you've finally done them, like when I started to wear my zitzits, Yes, I struggled for a while and struggled thinking about it. You know, I've got to wear this out and people are going to look at me and think I'm strange and whatever. But I've done it for so long now and I've only had two people inquire about them. You know, with, with no price really in the end. It was easy when, when you got over it. But I had to pay that original price. Following the Sabbath, I had to pay a price. Um, and, and many of his commandments. Leviticus 23, 1 to 4. And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, and you shall say to them, The set feasts of Yahweh, which you shall proclaim as holy gatherings, shall be there, these. These are my appointed feasts. Work is to be done six days, and on the seventh day shall be a Sabbath of rest, a holy gathering. You shall do no work. It is a Sabbath to Yahweh in all your dwellings. These are appointed times of Yahweh, holy gatherings, which you shall proclaim in their appointed seasons. Now, this could be the, one of the, the, the latest ones that we're struggling with. 
the feast, not only the Sabbath, but also the seven feasts. So we've got the new moons, we've got Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, trumpets, atonement, tabernacles, the new moon and the Sabbaths, all these feast days. Appointed feasts that Yahweh is calling us to come and meet with him on these special days. It's a cost, it's a struggle we have to come to to say, oh, now, on these days, I've got it, especially there's usually one a Sabbath on these days, a special feast day Sabbath, which means another day of no work. We've got to go to our bosses and say to them, I would like this day off because it's a Sabbath for me. It's, you know, the Muslims get their days off. They're not afraid to go and say, well, I must have that day off, and they have the people give them their day off. But are we ready to die to Yahweh, to obey his instructions, his commandments, to follow these feasts, to do what he's saying for us to do. And I believe at this point in time, a lot of us are struggling with those days to, to really appreciate that this is a day of rest, a day when I've got to meet Yahweh, that he will take care of everything. He does always. He let He takes care of it. You know, if Satan can have his Muslims getting in their days off, having their days of prayers, their times of bowing down to, uh, you know, God who doesn't even love them. We've got to die. It's death. Death to ourselves. Exodus 20, 10 to 11. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your God. You shall not do any work. It's quite plain. Work, basically, means the work that you get paid for. The work where you earn money. You nor your son nor your daughter, your men, you can't even get someone else to substitute for you. You can't hire people to take over your spot. They've got to have the rest too. Nor your daughter, your manservant and your maidservants, nor your cattle, nor your stranger within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and sanctified it. We've got to realise there's a lot to lose. If we don't love Yahweh, follow his commandments, do what he's asked us to do, then we will not enter into the kingdom for eternity. There's a big price to pay for obedience. And we forget that. We don't realise that. It's a bigger price than our 120 years maximum on this earth. It's, we're talking about eternity living with him. It's not worth it, folks. I like that one, the Shabbat. The rest is up to you. It's a day of rest. It's up to you. Jeremiah 10, 2-5. So says Yahweh, do not learn the way of the nations and do not be terrified at the signs of the heavens for the nations were terrified at them. For the custom of the peoples are vanity. For one cuts a tree out of the forest with an axe, the work of the hands of the craftsmen. They adorn it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not wobble. What's he talking about? Christmas. Here's again the biggest thing sometimes we have to die to. We have to die to celebrating Christmas, celebrating the pagan feasts that are out there. Valentine's Day. Uh, Easter. We've got to, sometimes you've got to die to it because it's so... In, um, ingrained in each one of us because we've lived for so long following these customs and now all of a sudden we've got to go against our family against our mother, against our father against maybe the children or whatever it is we've lied to the children for so long that oh yeah this is you know the Easter bunny etc etc rubbish die, we've got to die die to all these things Deuteronomy 5.21 you shall not last after your neighbour's wife. Now, from us men, one of the biggest one of the biggest weaknesses we have as men of not last lasting after females. You know, if you're a normal man, that's a, one of the biggest areas you've got to die to. Nor shall you covet your neighbour's house, his field, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, his ox or his donkey, nor anything which is your neighbour's. Jeremiah twenty two seventeen, But your eyes and your heart lust for nothing but your unjust gain and to shed innocent blood and oppression and to do violence. We lust after money. 
Again, something else we've got to die to. That Yahweh will supply our needs. In Matthew 5, 28. But I say to you, everyone looking at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery within his heart. Now all us guys basically, I can, I can say as a man, we're all guilty of that at some stage or other. But not only do we lust after those things, we lust after a lot of other things. We lust after a, a, a car, a house, a TV set. You know, you walk into someone else's house and they've got a bigger TV than you, then you start lusting, you want a bigger one. You know, he says, you lust. All of us, probably even the females, they, you know, they lust after, well, they walk into someone else's bigger kitchen. I want as big a kitchen as that. We're lusting. Yahweh will supply what we need at what, at what time he wants to give it to us. We don't have to lust for anything. We just have to relax with him, knowing that we're obeying him, and when we obey him, he will supply all that we need. Only what we need, not what we lust after. John 15, 12, 13. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I loved you. Greater love than this has no one, that anyone should lay down his life for his friends. That's love. Greatest love. And we've got to show Yahweh our love by laying down our life to a lot of things. 1 Corinthians 15, 31. I affirm by your, pro your pride, which I have in Messiah Yeshua, our Master, I die daily. See, it's, it's not just dying at the end of your life. It's dying daily. And this is Paul speaking. He says, I die daily. We have to die daily. Get ready for it. Romans 6.2 Let it not be. We who have died to sin, how shall we still live in it? So we basically we're dying to sin. It's, we've got to get sin out of our lives. And as, as they, Paul says, we have to die daily to any sin, any temptation, anything that's not of Yahweh. And you can't say, well, I don't know what sin is. No, you, it's built into you. You know what's wrong. The, if you had an Aboriginal way out on some island, he'd never, and there actually is an island somewhere in the sea, I forget exactly where it is, where there's a, a tribe of um, natives and no white man has ever been there, even to this day. And they know what's right and wrong because we have a conscience and our conscience tells us what's right and, right and wrong. And we have to die to the things that our conscience is telling us that's wrong. Romans 6.11 So also you count yourselves to be truly dead to sin but alive to Elohim in Yeshua, Messiah, our Master. Dead to sin. So the main message there is to love Yahweh, to love our fellow men, we have to die to sin. We, de daily. We have to be ready when the challenge comes to obey his commandments that we never knew about, like the Sabbath and the feasts and all that. Is I have to die to that to love Yahweh. So I have to make an arrangement to make sure I'm following that. I have to learn how to do it. How do I follow the feast? What do I have to do for the feast? Amen? Amen. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh, for this message. Father, I pray, Lord, that this message goes into us and we all start to say, yes, I must die daily. And what do I have to die daily to? What is on, on your favourite list for me this week, Father? The things that, what am I not doing? I need your grace and I need your help to accomplish and to do the things that you want me to do because I love you. Amen. I think uh, last week when Yahweh said he's dropping the plumb, plumb line down our lives to see what's out of alignment. Uh, you know that with the curtain is on. You know the curtain. When he said he was going to, you know, I saw the plumb line being dropped down and being a bunch of tools to see what's out of alignment in our lives. Um... um and the message that I'm bringing, not this week, next week. Um, week after. Week after is the next week for Alex. What's the day of next week? Uh, 
15 and then my two to finish the month. Okay, it's all lining up together, but you know, I think um, Sue had this interesting dream of basically about six groups of people. Um, sorry, yeah. Um, that there are people who are excited. No, I'll keep, I'll keep it going. Yeah, there are people who are excited about the Hebraic roots and want to learn. There are people who don't want to learn. There are people who don't want to change. There are mockers, what was the other two? There are people who are trying to understand but they can't understand. And those getting excited about it. And those getting excited about it. So six groups of people in a dream and somewhere you find yourself in that dream. And um, with Wendy and I prayed through this dream, we're going to pull it apart and sit down and have a talk to Sue about it. Um, because, you know, when you have a dream, God's talking to you when you have the dream. <laughs> and then we have to find out what he's saying externally. But um, going back to a few things that Alex was saying there, that when you have to change uh, your mindset, the biggest battle that all of us have is, is more our mindset. Okay, it's uh, and 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 um, we can have strongholds in our minds. Okay, and one of the biggest ones we'll all face and still face to this day is we are more people conscious than God conscious. Okay, because we're more concerned with what people think and we're more concerned with what they say than what we are, what He thinks, than what He says. And we all face that battle. Okay, and going back to the zitzit, originally with the zitzit, I'm thinking, okay, um, I know what the Word of God says, you want to do what's right, and my initial battle with that was getting over my own head. Okay, what am I going to say if someone says, what is that? Okay, well, it's only had two, and I answered one of them for the people who asked the question. Okay? Now it's it's like water off a duck's back. I don't care what they think, and I don't care what they say. If they ask me, I'll tell them point blank. Okay, and like I told that guy, some people wear crosses. Okay, this is we don't wear crosses. We wear the zitzit because we're in covenant relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, just tell them straight, and they don't say nothing. This is the point. We see we think they're going to say something. But they go, oh, okay, that's interesting. You know, and they say, well, if they ask you why you don't wear a cross, well, a cross is a, 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 a instrument of execution. So why don't we put a gas chamber around their necks and a lethal injection with it? Why don't we wear an electric chair? Hello? And they go, that's a good point. You'd be surprised what people think. And so I have to overcome that barrier. There are other barriers that I've had to overcome and get past myself. And this is what Alex was saying. We have to get past ourself. Okay? Because ourself is the obstacle. Okay? It's up here. Okay? And it is sometimes what other people say. Um, and sometimes family. I've told you before. I've paid a very high price to follow Jesus. Okay? But I will not back down. Okay, this is how it is, this is where I'm going, okay, and this is how I live my life. If you don't like that, well, too bad for you. Simple as that. To my own flesh and blood, I will not compromise my walk with God for anybody. And that includes my children, grandchildren, I don't care, not even him. I will not compromise. This is where we've got to come into this thing. It's part of this dream, I think it's part of this dream. Is we're not going to compromise. You can't be wishy-washy. One day you're wearing zit zits, the next day you're not. I mean, we've got to be consistent in what we're doing. We've got the talits down to some form of co consistency, okay? But we've got to be consistent people, walking consistently. And Alex didn't share things today. He shared with me the other day, but I'll tell you right now. Don't come and tell me you love me. Do you understand? Show me you love me. 
You understand what I'm saying? Because I've come to now at 60 years of age, 70, nearly 70, and I love you has become very cheap. There's no guts to it. Okay? Show me you love me. Okay? And it's the same with him. Okay? Don't come and tell me you love me. Don't come and sing songs to me that you love me. And don't do what I tell you to do and ask you to do. Show me you love me. You understand? And that's what he's saying. Show me you love me the way I showed you I love you. You understand? But don't come and tell me I love you. And don't do what I ask you to do. And that means we have to die to ourselves. And that's, like it's not disgusting. It. Even in the river here, I'm telling you right now, it's too much flesh. Too much flesh. We have to die to that flesh, okay? And Yahweh loves the smell of burning flesh on his altar. Okay? And so when we die to ourselves, what we think and what we worry about other people, what they're going to say, okay, that's going to rise up to him as a sweet-smelling offering, a sacrifice, and he's going to go, I smell burning flesh. And he loves it. But we're the ones that's going to die. We can't say, you know, and I know people are going to listen to this tape, and I don't give a continental cream cake. Okay, if you put work before Yahweh, you put money before Yahweh, you put... Um, I earn more money the weekends, I earn more money on this shift, I earn more money doing this, money, 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 and everything's before him, okay? You're not going to get fully blessed the way he wants to bless us. Yes, he blesses us, but I believe there's more blessings that he wants to release to his people if we will only do what he's asking us to do. And to do that, we have to die to ourselves what we think, or what we worry about. You know what I mean? Okay? And, and the Hebraic root is, you know, what we when and I will discuss this this morning too, is that, you, well, we're making adjustments, okay? We've got some things down to some kind of, what do you call uh, even thing, and other ones we're still working on. But at the same time, in your break roots, we don't forget the basics. Okay? Well, all of us are called to the ones who have parents. Okay? We're all called to honour our mother and father. Okay? We are not to yell at our parents. We are not to speak rudely to them. And we are to serve them as they have served us all of our lives, for those of us who still have parents. But those of us who haven't got parents, well, you don't miss them until you lose them. Do you understand what I'm saying? But at the same time, there's fine lines in that. With your walk with God, because you've got to stand up for what you believe in. And we're saying to Wendy today, there are people out there that are actually Muslims, they're working in a hospital. They have to give them five times a day time to pray. Because that's commanded in the Quran that they have to drop their knees five times a day to pray facing east towards Mecca. But a Christian will not go to the boss and say, excuse me, okay, I cannot work on that Saturday, I have to, I need to go to church. They're afraid to say anything, but the Muslim is not afraid. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the Christians are silent. And that reminds me of a story I listened to, to last night. And this Jewish uh, guy, prophet, I was quite shocked. All of us know about Waco, Texas. Pay attention to this. Okay? We all know what went down in Waco, Texas. And I got really convicted last night because sometimes you say, oh, you like your Waco and Waco, making a snide comment about what happened with David Koresh. And what happened in, in Texas that time, but this Jewish prophet said God told him that the government was going, what happened in Waco, Texas, was an attempt from the government, the beginning of the eradication of Christianity in America. Mm. 
and God told him to contact the churches and the churches were to take a tent down to Waco and they were to pitch a camp outside the grounds at Waco, Texas. He went down with a group of people. No one else showed up. Mm. And God told him, I'll hold them all accountable for the death of every man, woman and child that the government shot dead. He's going to hold the church accountable because they didn't go to pray to stop the onslaught that was coming. The church, the Christian, has got no guts. But the Muslim, has got plenty of guts. You don't give me time to pray, I'll take you to court and sue you for discrimination. But the Christian, and this is where something's awfully wrong here, I feel it in my guts. There's something wrong. Okay, we the church, okay, have to get our act together. Okay, and don't just think we're going to glide into heaven. Okay, I thought I said something when you forgot what I told you this morning. Oh, your ear tickling sermons. You won't hear ear tickling sermons in this place. Okay, they'll be in your face. Okay, because the ultimate goal is to get you home. Okay. So, you know, we've got to die and, and, you know, I'm in the process of dying to a lot of things and some of them are easier and others are not. Mm. Anyway, so we will make it and because I'm, I'm determined that I will make it. So if i got to die to everything I hold dear, okay, so be it. I really don't care anymore. I really just don't care. I think we've got to, you know, I think it's definitely lining up to that plumb line coming down your life last week. And we've got another three weeks into Moose thereabouts. And he's just looking at all of us and weighing it up. So, okay, what's well, had a whack here to bring us into alignment? Okay. Mm. Amen. So that was Charmaine adding some more information to this well, message. Me, that's why. Thank you.